Well, hey, how y'all doing out there? Uh, listen, man, it's uh, amazingly crazy times we're living in and all the things changing and uh, our unity, uh, uh, our food source, our, everything getting done and everybody's upset and everybody sees something uh, from their perspective and, and, and we try our best not to, to be a part of the problem or we try our best to change people's minds and sometimes it's like talking to a heroin addict about, hey, come on, let me help you get out of the street or, or a hoarder, let me come get that out of your house. Or somebody that's completely obese and you're saying, hey, man, let me show you a different diet. I want you to live. Uh, I want you to be happy. I want you to, to, to be healthy so you can do all these things and do it your way or do it the way. The only way to live is to, to live free and be free of everything. And that's what addiction is all about. And, and well, I don't like the word addiction and I don't like and I especially don't like the way it's been limited to drugs and alcohol or problems. Um, many addictions, uh, addictions cover anything. You can have addiction to food. You can have addiction to politi politics, religion. You, you know, it's, it's pretty much something that takes a hold of you and, you, and, and whether you want to believe it or not, a matter of, and you make excuses for it and you do everything to, to deny it. Uh, it's a problem in your life. It's a problem with other people. Uh, even if it's just you and you live in a house and you're, you got unlimited money and unlimited whatever it is you're addicted to, to do as you want, nobody see it, nobody tell. Still, it's, a, it's, it's death. It's, you do not have control over yourself. Well, I've, I've been trying to find ways with the, other, with the other side of what I'm talking about, the, the, the climate change, our, our um, world literally melting and burning right in front of us or freezing and, 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 and flooding in some places and drying up and whatever, all this crazy stuff going on. And we know that there's more to it. We know uh, it ain't right. We know that it has a cause. And this has all been, has been clear as a bell since the information just came out. We're at a point now where we can say we've hit rock bottom with, with, a, with an issue that we, we have where we, there's something we don't control anymore. It's, it's what big oil has done. Uh, but that's still the junkie mentality uh, being in the, now listen this is why I, i've had to try to find a way to talk to y'all about this so I, uh, as a former addiction counselor i never thought i would talk to y'all about big oil and what we're doing to the planet as an addict or, or as i not not and not as an addict as somebody that's lost control of their life um a, a crackhead um, um a heroin junkie uh, a tweaker uh, um, I, like i said an obese person anybody we see them and Depending on the situation or how criminal they've gotten or what they've done, there's it always we we have a reason for it. It's an accepted reason by everybody. You know whether they should have done it or not is fine. But you know, like, well, if he hadn't been drinking all his life, you know, he he wouldn't have died from cirrhosis of the liver, or he wouldn't have killed that man, you know, with that bar that night. And and it can be an excuse, but it, but it's accepted that it's a problem that somebody can lose their life over an obsession with something else. Well, this is y'all in oil. Gasoline, the car, plastic, uh, what's going on with the planet right now, what, how it happened because of this addiction, and are just literally throwing our rigs in the street and just laying around and just in a glutton of uh, oil and gas and, and the things that come with it. The lifestyle of America is all very addictive, but nobody wants to look at it like that. So, so being when we see somebody that's out of control, say, well, heroin or alcohol, we, we, we try to tell them first, and if it turns into an argument or if it's affecting many people, then we have an intervention. Well, all you, all you big old junkies out there, all you old junkies um, and, and materialistic um, cannibal junkies, I just, I just want to um, let you know that it's affecting me. But guess what? I'm not going to speak for me because I'm used to it. Uh, it's been around me all my life. I'm used to people that are crazy and do crazy shit, and even to you, uh, and it's all and it's sad to watch and it hurts and it could even kill you. But in mostly most of the time, it does kill them. Um, but I'm speaking for the whole entire planet. All right, this ain't no bullshit no more. The way we live is killing everything. It's not just killing you, junkie. It's not just killing you, you poor addict. And I do feel sorry for you, and I do want to help you out, and I do believe in a tough love approach. But I don't. I don't believe in. I, I don't believe in bullshitting with you no more. An addiction is when you do something, uh, and, and, and the addiction has levels, and you, but you do something to a point where it, it ultimately kills you and, or, or, or you hit a rock bottom before this untimely death. And you destroy people, you steal from them, you, you, you hurt them, you, you, just, they, you hurt them by just living who you are, by, by, by maybe becoming a, a prostitute on your knees down in the alley somewhere just to get a fix. This is what we become, and, and whether or not it's been done to us, the, the thing is, ain't, the first step of NA and, and AA 
and, and these accepted thought processes of how to deal with terminal and, uh, and fatal addictions and complete addictions of the mind where you won't even admit you're addicted. That's called the denial part, and that's the first part. Um, you, you, it's almost cost, uh, it's cost it's costing the planet everybody our lives. We got to stop and tell you. I want to give you that thought process that you would use for an individual or a group of people. Say, oh, you wanted to talk to all the methods. If you wanted to talk to all the crackheads. If you wanted to talk to all the people that are food junkies or, uh, or people, you know, that have lost control of their lives. You got to talk to them like for what they are. So I used to be an addiction counselor. And I, and, and be honest, I was very successful at it, but it's a, it's it will it takes all your time if you're really going to do it and really and really care about what you're doing. So I just take on the people that I will, I will not take that on anymore. Let's just put it that way. Um, but I've realized the behavior. I will tell people, and it's, now it's gotten to this point where at least, um, and which it ain't that many, but people that do have, a, say, a, a drug problem that's uh, the, 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 the addictions y'all care about, um, um, I do have ways, quick fixes for that. And one of them is just to, just to deal with that first step in the NANAA. And that is to admit that, admit that you have, that there's something in your life and see, it's not specific that has to take in control of your life. And, uh, and, and you finally got to a point where you can admit that and you're, and you're hopeless against this, this thing that is destroying your life. Well, this thing that's destroying the world is oil. And it does come down to oil. So we're going to simplify it and keep that simple because that's part of the addiction to, to find reasons and the devil's in the details and blah, blah, blah. And then finally you'll just accept it and, uh, and say, well, yeah, that's what I am. That's what we got. I ain't got nothing else. I got everything's blame and excuses. So I went down the line. And I, I want to try to keep this short a little bit. That's, that's the problem. Um, um, whether you're a junkie that can a function in junkie because, you know, like two different junkies. If you're, you're a functioning addict or, or um, uh, just a full-blown worthless addict and your and your drug is all you you see and 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 where you don't where you lost your job and you and you lost your income and you lost your car and you sold everything uh well you still seem to have the same money to get the drugs that you had when you in the beginning so it, it ain't about money and it's not about any other thing except what you're doing and at that point um you get to where you want to admit it well it's a lot of times it's because somebody came out and the, most of the times it's not successful in getting it changed or at least getting your thought process back online at really you, realizing you are in control of your life and the few things that you have, you can either be in enjoyment, but when you're not enjoying it, it it's, it's detrimental to everything. And being that this involves the planet, here you go with what we're going to say. You have, now first of all, you, you have the power to stop this anytime you want without an excuse. And just like with addicts and alcoholics, sometimes they drop away from behaviors or places, they don't go to the bar no more, even to just have a, a hot dog and a Coke or something to eat. You know, there's things like that. Um, they walk away. And you think, well, Bill, I can't walk away from my car. I got to drive five miles to work. I can't walk away from um, um, shopping. I mean, they, they, they gave me the, yes, we all can, because this is a collective um, addiction. This is a, a collective destruction destructive behavior and uncontrolled life you're not controlling what you're doing you're not controlling you're not being what you say you are i don't care if you're just a housewife that that uh that has a minivan and and probably does um five to seven gallons a day being that good role model helping with other people's kids getting the kids to dance lessons getting the groceries taking care of the house doing all the good things i don't care look at what it's done that part don't matter. That's the part of what your addiction has done to you that a lot of people can't put down because they they still got the blame and stuff. Um, and, the, and the other thing is at this point in time, and the reason I'm using the, the normal addictions and the thought process you use to correct them is because it's new addiction and what it's done. Well, nothing's bad till it's bad. Uh, and there's a time and place for everything. I believe in recreational. Let's keep it to drugs, just for the record, so you'll get what I'm talking about about with big oil, and 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 what it what it really is, how big it really is, how how detrimental to every form of life it really is, and how and how beautiful and and like that first line of cocaine or or that or that first drink of alcohol when that bothers you no more, man, it's it's comfortable. It gives you something, but it's it'll key and it's not sustainable, and uh, and it was never meant to be just like the drugs that you. The other thing is your desire and your need for escapism and to be comforted that makes people an addict. That's the tough love side of me telling you that. But um, or you know better. Like most people can become drug addicts, they know better. They they were taught all through school that heroin was bad. Heroin was bad. Now look at Ohio. What them people didn't go to school? 
You were told cocaine and crack is bad. You were told meth is bad, and look at the rates on it. And these are the same fucking drugs used all the time. It's the same lies used to keep you on big oil. It's the lie that works. It's the lie of availability. If it wasn't there, you wouldn't be addicted to it. It's there. They made it. It's in, this is easily available and socially acceptable like alcohol. So it's one of these addictions that's killing and, and maiming other people like with the DUIs and the, um, and the people that go off on, on alcohol or, or burn themselves in the bed and take out the whole apartment complex where you're taking out the whole earth. Because you went to sleep because of your addiction. So we're, we're fixing to get out of it. We're fixing to cure this because it, th trust me, the power's in your hands and, and you're going to have it. Um, what, what gets you at, what gets you addicted to something, say like oil, and you know, and we, and, and you know all the truth about it. You know that all the wars for oil or, or all the wars lately have been for oil probably since World War II. You know that, um, um, you, you, and you were easily misled to thinking there's an enemy and you'd kill them and take their oil. Wow, well, there's something else. It's like, yeah, man, the, the drug dealer's bad. Let's, let's kill him and take his heroin. Um, and, um, um, and you, but if you, were easy, you, you easily find anything to cling on to because you don't want to believe the, the, the truth that will take your addiction away from you. Uh, you don't want to admit that you're an addict because you don't have the problem. Everybody else does. You only drive a little bit. Um, you only use um, hemp products. I don't. I don't care. I don't care. Cause it. Cause if you're not, if you're not the 99.9 percent that are the addicts that are killing this country, you're the fucking codependent. And that's that's ten times worse than an addict. That allows the addict to, to to feel good about being addicted to killing himself and with this big oil planet. So um um. And just like just like these junkies, they go through these different levels now. And um, I'm trying to put that. I, I had it up here, but you know, um, say like a housewife that just started doing a little bit of bump of cocaine at a party, and then a friend gave her, and she didn't even think about it for a few days. But a few days later, that, that friend at the party said, "Hey, I, I had some of this left. You want to do one?" And then you do one there, and then, and then you ask them for a little bit, and it's all good in the beginning because it's not out of control. You're enjoying. A creature comfort. You're enjoying something. Makes you feel good. Makes you whatever. And you, and you don't think anything's wrong with it, even though you've been told it's wrong now because of that curiosity that killed the cat. Um, um, you're you're getting a taste, and um, and somehow it just manages that um, it wound up getting uh, alcohol or, or drugs or whatever. It wound up coming up at a time where you did something where you were having um, a problem in your life, a, a, a bad emotional time or depressed or something, and it helped. And, or you had a really good time doing it, say, like drinking. Everybody has a good time drinking, even though they see themselves on the video looking like an idiot. They had a great time being an idiot. And that's one of the funny and good things about uh, drunks, you know, people getting drunk or getting drunk and enjoying it every once in a while. But the, but the truth about it is it, it makes other people sick, and a lot of people don't like to see that. And, um, and then you wind up hurting yourself or, you, like I said, you do something stupid because you're being stupid, so you get in a car, you, you kill somebody. So it's the same thing here, but... Um, um, And like, and that's the other thing. You normalize it, cause, cause see, when the housewife, when she was being um, Susie Homemaker and and the Pancake Mom, man, she was and and worth her weight in gold, by the way, and being a good person and doing doing good things, healthy and natural. Uh, when she became the, when she started doing the drugs, well, the the all the associations she's made in her life, all the people that knew her for being that good housewife and mother and uh, and home and uh, and, uh, and and all that. Uh, now, now they're seeing her change. Now they're seeing her act different. Now they're now they're now they're starting to see the addiction. So instead of being with that with that group of birds, because she was of their color, so birds of a feather flock together. Uh, now she's with her junkie friends, or it, that even gets worse and worse from from your upper middle class junkie to the middle class junkie to the to the urban junkie to the street junkie to the homeless junkie to the dead junkie. And um, but um, um, so. After a while, they get used when they've accepted. Hey, well, I mean, I'm, this is me. I'm gonna be a junkie, and then just keep this quick. That's when you start accepting your track marks, the bruises on your arms, the 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 sores on your mouth or your skin, or you're looking like Dave Chappelle when he did the Tyrone the Crackhead. Uh, you're looking like these people that you used to laugh at or that's been been ridiculed or you felt sorry for or you saw going to die. Uh, the woman that um, uh, and the addiction's harder, especially drug addiction, is harder on women because. Um, men, men that aren't addicts will, will gladly use the cocaine to get uh, sex from it, and somehow your morals and everything drops. See, all this gets bad. The way you look, you don't care no more. The way you, the, the 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 way people view you, you don't care. 
It's me. I'm this way. And it's because it is. I was raped when I was a little girl, and this cocaine makes me feel better, so I'm going to smoke some crack. And if you got some crack, I'll suck your dick for some crack. And that's how bad you get. Men and women. Men be out there sucking dick for crack, too, by the way. And I hate to say it like that because that's a, a blatant in-your-face description of what many people and people like that's told me that's where they was in their life. Um, um, have, will go to, to to have their addiction and look at what we've done to the fucking planet to have yours, to have that car, to drive around, to have all them plastic cheap trinkets and, and whatever. Maybe you didn't know. Maybe, maybe you're just really naive of, of, of the price that, we're, that we have to li literally pl play, pay on this in the natural world to have what you want. So you, you've gotten this, this, this low. This, this, I'm, I'm comparing you the problem to... to uh, the, what you accept as an addict, what you see as a, as, uh, 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 a good person turned into a junkie because they couldn't control that damn cocaine. They couldn't control that man. Look, they lost out their teeth. They got they got uh, lesions on their face. They done lost their kids to child and family services. Their whole life is gone. They're, they they don't have rock bottom. It's going to be the grave. Well, let me tell you something about you old junkies. You've been sold one of the best addictions possible. It has no purpose. We never You never needed it. It's like if they invented a drug right now and it, and it just, for some, I don't know, it just destroyed your life without giving you any kind of buzz and people did it. This is what they did. They made it seem like the most needed thing in the world. They have put it in everything we need. There was always an alternative. It was lied about and it was a natural connection through cannabinoids with, with THC and hemp. But they, they really distorted it because of the hemp. Uh, but that, that, look, at, look at how the everything's covered in plastic and everything's toxic and everything's war and everybody's stupid and everybody's sick. Everybody's hungry. Everybody's full. Man, it's everything's excess or everything's look at the homeless rate. Look at the people in prison. This all comes down to the breakdown of your morals as you went along the way they had to change and break your morals. See, just think if the, if the drug dealer could, could control the drug dealer that sells you the heroin and he makes money off of you just because you, you're a junkie. And, and that's the best kind. And he even has you doing tricks on the side so you can pay for it. And he, get, he gets it for more money than you want, than you, than you can pay because now you're a slave. You're, you're addicted. And you know it. And you've accepted it. And you, and you look like shit and whatever. Now, think about that in terms of um, if, if, if their, your lifestyle made, people, made these people rich and the oil was what they got rich, of, rich off of. They would have to promote it in a way. Oh, wow. Has this not been done with big oil? That you start accepting it all the time. Every time it, well, the Exxon, ah, these water, oil spill, a rig blows up, BP horizon, and every time. The conditioning to keep you a tax slave in a slave period really does hint with this because the car it represents your addiction to freedom or wanting to get out or the fact that you're so smart and you can make inventions and, and, and now you can go place to place. The moving, you know, the, the, the horseless carriage, wow, wow, wow. So big, big advancement. Why are you still using it for the last 125 years, huh? Why are people still taking heroin and addicted to heroin, huh? Why do you think people are goddamn addicted to crack and cocaine and still smoke it now, huh? What about the, what, how did heroin come back? Wow, in places like Ohio, good moral people, huh? Look at everybody and what they are and accept a president that, that's, a, that's a cheater and does all the things that addicts do or rich people do that control addicts. Now think, now think if that, that dealer that sold you, sold you that could control his, his opinion at the church. Or his opinion from your mom or his opinion from your wife or your husband or your kids that you're destroying their life while you destroy yours. And he could control their opinion. So now they're telling you, well, I'm just going to be codependent. That's all right. Well, do it at home. Do it at home, man. All right. You know, I don't want do, do the tricks out in the shed. But, you know, come on in and take a shower after you get done. That, that, that's, what, that's what's been done to you with big oil to a point to where you believe it. You're killing yourself. It's killed the planet. All this is facts. Dead facts. And you don't want to listen to it through talking reason or logic, common sense, reality. We have talked about how, they, and how everything's been politicized. Another junkie, that's another addiction. Politics and religion, they're addictions. They're addictions. I'm using this word to, to, give you, to talk to you in the common language of something we all see as a problem when somebody loses control of their life and they destroy others. Um, with this rock bottom y'all got, You've already hit it, and you like it down there. They have they have conditioned you to that point where you're happy and and because uh, you know you're an addict, but you got to have it, and it wasn't your fault. It was here before you got here. There's nothing you can do about it, and man, you're gonna drive that car until the atmosphere collapses or the last tree uh, drops its last leaf, and the last oxygen producing thing that we needed that's killed by our addiction that just now kills killed everything else. 
There is no rock bottom. We're there. It's it's already crashed. There's a there's a domino effect and uh, of taking out all the other life because of your oil, just because of oil, and what it's done, and all the uses of oil. Now, I mean, y'all got to look at it. it's big. Like I said, as this and and like I said, like with the heroin junkie and all these other things, you're just gonna keep on. They find a reason to keep on, and it never goes away. <laughs> I mean, there's been. Uh, what do they call them? Poppy heads. Everything's a head, a poppy head, um, a crack head, a meth head. So, um, you can look at the way that this came and we got here. You can look at how you accept it more. Um, you can understand the, the, your, your psychological uh, definition of uh, addiction and why a person does it. For, for reasons of the mind. And then you can just see that, yes, something was here. It would almost be like um, taking somebody that's a good, wholesome person, that good housewife, for instance, we're talking about the soccer mom in the minivan. And 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 and, and, and she woke up one day on fucking planet opium, and the beaches were heroin. And uh, it was there when she got there, and everybody was doing it, and it was accepted by everybody like the birds of a feather. And and the, and the infra, the lies spread to you by the dealer were so good that man, you just want to buy more. You bought bigger fucking cars with big oil, y'all. You use it more and more and more out there. Their damn cracker plant where they make where they make the oil for plastic. The most one of the most deadliest processes on the people that make it and the people that use it and the whole planet. And it probably as bad as as your car itself. And because of this common birds of a feather, uh, we, people can go there and celebrate life. And the people that ain't addicts, they accept it, their codependence, or they're threatened. They're like those people, and say, "Well, if you don't, if you don't show up for Trump's thing, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna um, and promote and make it look like we're all happy to be here and killing the planet, and that you're not just making a living in a failed society that that's uh, full of a bunch of heroin addicts in their golden streets." Statue of Liberty ought to have a fucking needle hanging out of her arm, or, or, or no, an oil, and, and uh, a goddamn gas pump stuck in her arm like a needle. That's what the Statue of Liberty should have, because that's what we are. That's how much we've accepted it. We accept the immoral behavior and reasoning to do our dope because our, we got to have our monkey. And that's and look at our government, look at our religious leaders. Mo most of the junkies that you so that you hate so much and think about or or, or or disgusted with are the ones that will will suck a dick in the middle of the street in broad daylight for a ten dollar rocker crack and you think that's bad well look at how you've accepted everything around you that's that 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 type of compliance is the same mentality as, as might as well doing a physical act you're doing something and you're not even benefiting from it you're paying for it it's destroying you. It's made you an idiot. It's made you. It's made you dead, dead in your soul and everything. It's nothing but the drug, nothing but what you're addicted to, the the fast food at Burger King, um, a, a Coca Cola, anything that you're addicted to, and and it's con taking control of your life, and it's hurting everything else. This is where you are. The, what you hate the most, you have become. But because of that, first, one of them early on traits you get, one of the things you tell yourself first is. It can't happen to me. Did y'all ever stop? Did y'all ever stop and wonder? Or, or, or did every researcher try to find the successful um, uh, daily user of, or, or an addict and junkie, a junkie? That, that, how many people survive being meth heads? How many people have survived doing heroin? How many people have survived and been successful doing cocaine or crack? Or even being a, a, a daily drunkard? Think about that. And why is this the same ones for some of them uh, 5,000 years? Opium's been around a long time. But this mentality has always been in us. And something takes over for some reason because we think and we, we reason. We're objecting to the truth and not seeing our perception and what we are doing in it in ourselves. Or we've gotten to a point where we're, we are cool with everybody and we love them so much we've said, so we think we're only hurting ourselves. Can you believe that? It's destroyed our planet, y'all. It's not that you're taking out your veins and you can't find one uh, with a needle anymore. It's that the body is dead that you're injecting this dope into. You have killed yourself and you killed our host, our hostess, Mother Earth. So I'm telling you now, please stop your fucking destructive behavior 
Uh, I'm not going to write it down on a letter. I'm not going to have a nice intervention with you and say, hey, man, I'm sorry about this. And, you know, I forgive you for stealing my car. I forgive you, I forgive you for stealing my money. I forgive you for raping my daughter. I forgive you for goddamn taking my life. I forgive you for killing my planet. No, I ain't saying that. What's your fucking behavior? That as in what you used to be when you were a good person, when you, when you were thinking straight. Before, before this lifestyle and everything that was sold to you, your over-consuming, locust-like uh, death style that you chose, the drug that you chose after you found out and knew that it was destructive. That's what you, you kept doing it. So that's, when are you going to stop? Stop it now. Stop it now. Stop. I don't make an excuse for nothing. Fucking stop. And wean down by sure. Use the same um, wise philosophy and method to get off big oil and wean down. But I'm not, have you heard this shit about they're going to they're gonna change something in 2025, they're going to change something, we're going to go carbon something in, in 2050, this, this, this state uh, done this, this country's done that uh, at this time? You ain't going to get past 2025. God damn it. You're not going to get past the day. When is the best time for an addict to go to a, a rehab and, and stop? Right then. Right then when he realized the step one, the only step you ever need. We don't have to make amends for this, y'all. We got to save the planet's life. And we can't save the planet's life. And the people that are not like you and not addicted to you, not the birds of a feather, the animals, the, the, the trees, everything that you're killing because of, the, of this group mentality addiction. If you, don't, if, if you don't stop, it's over. And it may already be. But it, it wasn't life, and now you see that you've been doing wrong. So, no, don't. we're not going to use the excuse that I'm not hurting nobody. We're not going to use the excuse and the reasoning and blame it on anything else. Right now, we need to stop. We need to stop. So stop. Step away as much as you can and start working towards. Do the things you got to do, and as you're winning off, start putting energy and thought and power to how you can get off oil. If it's made by oil, get away from it. It's killing everything. It's killing the planet, and it's an addiction, and it's not needed. Matter of fact, it is subpar. It is an outdated energy source, burning for power and burning this crap for power. Wow. Every other civilization was either taken out by some other event other than, than their power source killing them. Ha! We're going to be the first one, and we kill the planet with it. The planet survived all of those, but this addiction is going to kill. So stop. Don't find a reason. Stop. And then start working towards your, your recovery. And maybe if this catches on and people think about what they're doing with big oil, with the way they think about what they have done in their life with other addictions, like I said, food, drugs, or anything. If we start talking about it and working on that solution now, the, 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 the common sense knowledge, the only fact about this is stopping now and stepping away. Just like a, a, a heroin addict. As soon as he... You know, about to put that needle in that arm and he says, this is wrong. Stop, run. Go then. Fuck the job. Fuck, fuck life. You ain't got a life. You ain't got a life. You're walking dead. You are the zombies. You are the crackheads. You are the, the midnight, 3 o'clock in the morning zombies walking around in a, in a, in a meth-addicted town in, in a little small town in Pennsylvania or somewhere. You're just like them. So you can't rag them. You are them. You're done wrong, so stop. And yes. I'll give you this one part of the blame and excuse. I completely understand it's not your fault. And I'm one of you too, by the way. So this is a bird of a feather. You forgot, you, you know, in the hustle and bustle of things and things were thrown at you, with the oil, it's one thing. With drugs, at least there was a need for a creature comfort. At, le at least you, know, you could keep it enjoyable, uh, enjoyable. At least recreational drugs and individual responsibility went together. There is no responsibility with big oil. They're not responsible, but they're not the culprit. The junkie, there would be no crack if there were no crackheads. You got to have heroin to have people have an, to have a heroin epidemic. You got to have oil to show everybody there's a dead planet. We can stop now. So do it because it's right. Do it because it's whatever. I, I guess, well, I'm going to tell you like I told every other junkie. Fuck you. Go do it. I don't really care. I've been in your shoes. I'm the high, I don't, and I didn't give a fuck then, and I don't give a fuck now because it's not going to be the give a fucks that get you out of this until you give a fuck about yourself. And, and if you think I'm uh, bugging you or something, or, or you, oh man, you're, you're going to make this worse. 
Uh, I've had crackheads say, oh, you've, you've tampered with my sobriety. I, I want to go get high. I'd give them 20 bucks. Say, here, go get you a rock. And come back then. Go get high. Go then get the next one after you suck a dick. And then, and then come back and we'll start working on your recovery. Because I ain't your fucking friend. I'm just a man that's been there and, I'm, and there's only one solution to this. Stop. Realize that you have done wrong. And then to make an amends part, maybe you can save your life, the rest of your life, and your kid's life, and your, and your kid's kids. And other things that, that are more important than you that only want to live. Planet Earth. Stop. I love y'all. And it's this kind of love. This is how much I love y'all. You think about what the fuck I just said. And stop. Big oil. Now. I love y'all. Peace. Don't live in fear.